Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Any Emerson, Lake, and Palmer fans out there? I think I'm showing my age. Anyway, welcome back to the bench. And today we're going to be testing out Turbo Dork, and in particular, Turbo Dork color shifts. Um, these are the color shifts in the front. The back are metallics. They make a lineup of paint that's metallic only. And I have more of those because I personally have more of a use for metallic paints. And color shifts but I do like to have a few color shifts on hand um, and these are separated because these are recommended over black only and these are recommended over white black and other colors and uh, over other color shift colors um, I try to pick stuff that's different but a lot of them are really kind of the same if <laughs> there a lot of them are purples into greens greens into purples so uh, I did my best to choose ones that are kind of on the different end of things. But for this test, we have Crystal Cavern. You can see what they're trying to tell you on the shift right there. I guess left to right, it would be this blue to purple. Lunar Eclipse. And I'll shift it over. There you go. Cloud Nine. four D glasses I think this has four colors in it is what it says yeah, there's your green there's a blue there's a violet or a blue a purple and then some kind of yellowish at the end and these are the ones that are over white prism prism power prism what am I saying prism prism power and twin suns now on the side of this you'll see shake well before use oops there you go. make sure the tip is clear apply over there it is apply over black white or white to black a zenithal now the company doesn't make their own thinner um, they recommend a, a, an acrylic thinner but I think they highly recommend uh, an airbrush medium and for that I had meaning to be buying this stuff anyway so I, I use this as an excuse to finally pick it up it thins fluid acrylic colors for spraying so this is a universal thinner for uh, most acrylics you can use this I guess with the craft paints that I did earlier where I thinned it with uh, my homemade thinner and even windshield washer fluid but uh, this is uh, this chemical is made just for that purpose and I think it flows better and it, and it seems to dry smoother so uh, Golden is a great company and uh, early tests show that that's a good product now uh, for this I'm gonna spray it over uh, if it calls for black we'll put it over a black spoon if it calls for both we'll do it over both I took uh, some of my resin casted stones I did for my primer test and put some black on some this one's white of course and I'm gonna try it over some pieces so uh, uh, some Gundam pieces so here is a uh, one face here's another face some some old kits I got white I got black uh, black on this piece right here this I, I painted with uh, all clad gloss black base is what I used for that you can use anything for these I think it goes over the plastic raw too um, I tested both and I found that it will go over the plastic spoon raw so I mean I have some black plastic plastic spoons so I guess there's no need to uh, use the uh, glossy colored ones but I, I I'll show you both in the end so uh, that's what we're gonna do now here we have hot water I brewed hot water in my K cup my uh, Keurig brewer and I just put it in here and I put this lid on it keeps it hot for a long time on the bench because I like to flush the airbrush out with uh, hot water and then uh, I'll blast some of my homemade thinner through it in the end my acrylic thinner and go on to the next for this we're gonna use my Patriot 105 my Badger Patriot 105 I recommend a the largest size airbrush you guys have meaning uh, this is a point 55 millimeter and uh, uh, early t uh, testing uh, when I did this test about a year ago uh, I had a little bit of trouble pushing it through the uh, point three you had to turn it up thin it more and this way uh, you don't have to thin it as much you, you don't want to thin it a ton and uh, I'll show you how the thinning ratio I like uh, what it looks like when I blend it out and we're going to do that now. Now another thing is you really have to shake these 
a lot. They come with a BB or a bearing inside, but um, they recommend you, you shake them uh, uh, quite a bit. And then uh, shake it just before you pour it in. And the, they come sealed. Can you see the black seal right here? This will break the seal as it comes off. Now uh, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to show you my paint shaker I've been using. I'm about to upgrade it anyway, but I'm going to show you um, what I've been using to shake these, and I'll show you how I thin them. All right, guys, I'm back with the paint mixer. I want to show you something nice that uh, Turbo gives you. They give you this nice uh, um, little cheat sheet. See it? Tips and tricks. You know, shake the bottle well. More than you think you should. A mixing ball is included. You'll hear it rattle, but as I say, more than you think you should shake it. So you really got to shake this stuff up and pour it out quick the second you think you're done shaking it. You know, make sure the tip is clear because sometimes it plugs. You got to poke a toothpick through it and it'll come flying out. So be careful with that. Use the appropriate base coat. The bottle tells you which base coat to use. It does. And most Turbo Shift colors can be used over black unless specified. So they can all go over black. So we will put every, all of them over black. But the two that can re recommend white, we'll look at them over white. And it's two, two to four layers thin with the airbrush or hand brush. I'll hand brush a few at the end. And uh, don't apply it in one thick layer. It'll pull. And that's it. You can layer them, but don't mix them together. And washes and glazes can go over them too. So I, I've, I've clear coated some last year, and, and it came out perfect. So anyway, they give you a nice cheat sheet with it. I do like that. And uh, here is my paint shaker. Um, I'll be getting a more high-end paint shaker soon, more of a vortex. It's just going to come in more handy for me. I have so many paints. But this is this will get you by, particularly with the smaller bottles of uh, the Vallejo, the Vallejo type of bottles and these types. So um, if you can shake it up and loosen the uh, bearing yourself, you know, and then you can just lay this in here. It comes with a couple of these straps. Go to the end where you keep it on the tightest. And then and that's it. You're going to let it rattle. I usually will uh, be doing something else, prepping, while I let this shake itself off. And you're going to shake it again yourself afterwards. You know, I like to uh, actually pre-shake them myself and then put them in for a final shake. You know, we'll call that it just for the video anyway. But uh, I, I've shaken these quite a bit off camera. And um, it gets boring shaking on camera, so I like to do that off camera. And I turn the camera on just before we're ready to go. And uh, particularly with paints that really need to be shaken up. So let me pause this and get all the materials out, and I'll show you how we thin it. All right, guys, with that out of the way, we get our cup. We get our sticks. I like to take my uh, stirrers that I got on Amazon here and just cut them in half and uh, doubles up my 500 sticks to a thousand and um, like I said you want to shake this just before you're ready to pour it you'll see this seal broken when we do this right now what are we going with here cloud nine we're gonna do cloud nine first this is an over black all right we're gonna break the seal you can even get rid of this little black piece if you want and we're just gonna go ahead see if I can show you from out there see how thick it is guys Look how thick it is. It's a blob. One of the problems I have is um, you don't want to thin it that much too, but it's so thick to start with that it, it's pretty. These are great bottles, by the way. They they self-clean, so to speak. Can you see it? There's no need to wipe. I usually have to wipe my other uh, bottles, the uh, Vallejos and one of them, uh, but th these just, they come out perfectly. Um, no need to shake the uh, airbrush medium here from Golden, but I'm going to put in like, uh, this is going to take like 10 drops, I think. But I'm going to show you, you're going to use your eye more in this than uh, anything else. All right. Ooh, see? See what I mean by the nozzles? The uh, These are great. I'll say that right now. Much better than most that I've tried. Okay, there it is. Now, this looks like milk, but don't worry about it. it, it you can use this on anything. It clears itself up. It's like a, a milky... Uh, clear you know when you put like a gloss varnish and it looks like milk but it goes on clear same principle now you can tell so the bubbles in there it's holding the bubbles because it's so thick but it's, it's still pretty thick can you see how I'm holding it up to the side again that's good enough for our badger our badger should push this right through and um, you can almost see the purple shimmer 
in the light. It's already getting some kind of effect, and that's only when I put like my hand behind it. I don't know if you can see it on camera there. So we're already uh, color shifting in the mixing cup. Um, but it should be able to push this through. If you want, you can go a little thinner. If you guys have a uh, smaller needle, I recommend not much below a, a 0.4. You could probably do a point three. You're going to have to thin it a bit, but um, I would stick with uh, over blacks. Anything over white uh, is going to give you trouble when you're going to thin it out too much, I, I think. But uh, that's good. All right, we're going to head over to the airbrush and the booth, and we're going to apply this on. And uh, we're going to do uh, at least three of these, and I'll do the rest three off camera is what I'll do, something like that. This one goes over white. These go over black. We're going to test all of them, though, over black. So let's head over to the booth. And we'll check this stuff out. All right, guys, we are at the booth. First up will be Cloud Nine. As I said, I always keep a stock of gloss base coated black spoons, but in early test shows, no difference. Um, I already done one off camera. I did one off camera, so I'll show you that uh, that there is no difference. So I got these spoons from Walmart. They sell them already black. They're like semi-gloss. So uh, because these work on that, we're going to go ahead and uh, start with that. So the Patriot is loaded up. We're going to do a headpiece on this Gumplip kit. And we're going to do one of these stones. And um, let's make sure it's the black base. Yes. This is black base only. So you won't see this at all over anything else. Okay, you're going to go across. You're going to stay about three inches away. This is set for 15 PSI, but that's particularly for this airbrush. It's a good, it's a good PSI for that. You can tell it's already coming on. Check that out. So what we'll do is we'll put a little layer on everything. The stone should be a good way to uh, see what it can do. I'm not pulling this all the way back, guys. You've got to be subtle. I find this, uh, oh, it looks great, look at that. I find this airbrush great for these uh, thicker paints. Highly recommend this airbrush. It really has changed the way I uh, prime and uh, do my base coats on a lot of my kits. You probably really see the effect once it dries and once we get it back to the bench. It's, it's tough to show you now. It's almost tough for me to see. And I'm sitting right in front of it. All right, let me let that dry for a minute. Let's go back to the spoon. Now, what I want you to guys to do is, I want the last coat to be a wet coat. It'll look like you dipped it in the paint on your last coat. I personally like this already on this rock. I uh, almost don't want to go any further with this. I probably won't. Yeah, that came out great. All right, we'll go with this. Oh, wait, we'll go back to the uh, Gundam head here. Such a tiny piece, I guess I can hit this one with its final coat. This stuff washes right off your hand, so for this test I have no gloves. I usually don't anyway. Alright, he's gotta go get in the dehydrator. Last one will be the spoon. Now here we go guys, I'm gonna show you the wet coat. I'm gonna come in closer and slower as you go across. See the shine already? And there we go. You'll see the results I guess under the lights under the bench. I'll go put this in the dehydrator and have it dry and then uh, we'll move on to the next color.
All right, guys, next up we have 4D glasses. I'm gonna do the same thing. This black spoon, dumpler piece, this black stone. And the other one I did off camera, I did it over gray so you guys can see it over a lighter primer. Go in subtle for your first coat. I like to shoot far out for my first coat because what it does is it acts as its own primer. It dries sooner because uh, of the distance in the air hitting it. And uh, you're getting it a little pre-dry without having to blow on it. And um, it's already on there. That's it. Ah, this one's showing through. You can almost see the reflections already. Use this gumpla piece here. It's already coming on it. All right. Almost, I see more green already. Let me put this up here. I the camera shot to dry. Let's go in with this. The rock doesn't seem to need as many coats, so I'm going to finish the rock up now. I'll let that dry. We'll see it under the lights under the bench a little better. Alright, let's go back in with the gumpla piece here. It looks rough, but uh, it dries really, uh, it dries smooth. Alright, let's finish off this spoon. Now, like I said, we're going to come in close, a little slower. to get that final base. See that nice and shiny now? How's that, huh? All right. Now, for camera purposes, let's go ahead and do one on gray just so you guys can see it. Oh, what you guys almost can't see. I mean, already we can see the reflection. Oh, well, you can see a little purple when I did it over black. I guess you want to achieve almost a, a tinted pearl, I guess. Um, I found it didn't matter how many coats I put on this, so as long as it's shiny, I, I'm going to call it done. Because no matter what I put on this, it doesn't change. But you can't put it over other colors. Let's see how it looks. Let's look at it over this uh, Mr. Color 68 Matter Red. Let's see. I just grabbed this out of my spare spoon bin. And I don't see much yet. I'm, I'm air drying it now, guys. Yeah, we'll have to check it under the lights. We'll see how it looks like. All right, guys. Let me clean out the brush, hot water, and I'll come back with the next color. All right, guys. Next up is Prism Power. This one is a recommended over white, black, or other colors. So um, we're going to see what some of this looks like over white. Right here. And then... Uh, Try it over black. And then I got the Gundam piece here. Hold on. Reaching for it. Sorry if I hit the camera. All right. Light coats here. Oh, hold on, guys. Just for the record, I thinned this with my uh, Ultimate Airbrush Universal Thinner just to show you guys that it works with everything. And, uh, 
it then just the same. Okay, we're gonna do the distance. Dry coat. All right, let's try it over black. Oh, it shows up good on black. Can you see it? That's not bad. Not going to show up on the white until uh, the final hit, I think. Uh, a little bit. This is definitely going to have to do some drying time between. Over white, it's a little trickier. Again, I don't think this is going to be a deep pink color when you're done. I think it's going to be a subtle look. Definitely behaves over black better, that's for sure. This might not be dry yet. Let's do a little air drying on it. I'm just blowing out air. I'm still going to go from the distance. I'm not going to come in close yet. Come along, though. Back to the black one. Yeah, it's definitely in the purple tinge when you go there. Doesn't seem to do well over white. I'm not catching the color shift look, you know? All right, it's just turning it a pink. I like it over black better. Okay, we're gonna go in and get the final coat on this. There it goes. All right. All right, guys, I'm going to go over this. I'm going to hit it one more coat. I don't want to do a ton of them on camera. Then I'll put them in the dehydrator, and we'll come back, and we'll go over all the colors. All right, guys, welcome back to the bench. And here we are with uh, the results. Uh, we will go left to right here, and um, definitely some winners and losers here. And uh, we'll get to that in a minute. First, we'll start with Cloud9. All right, this is meant to go over black, and here it is over black. Let's see what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, it's pretty close. Is that the darker purple to this gold color? You can see the gold color right here. You really see it now, the upper half. Look at that. Now it's all gold. Depending on where you look at it, that's the purpose. So this was a good one. This is it on the stone. Not as much color shifting here until you really go on an angle. If it's on your shelf, you'll see the darker portions will be gold. Let's try to flip it. Right now it's more of a metallic, which is I hope these will give me. This is the kind of look. But it looks like there's too many ridges in it to give a nice effect. Nah, it's subtle. I can see it. It's subtle. It went on good, though. This is it on. I have to keep it on this so I can hold it up on the uh, Gundam face the head I should say there's the purple but when I turn it it turns to a gold I'm not crazy about it I think it needs a wider area like this to really get the look alright and here it is over gray it's pretty subtle without the reflection of a light. It just looks like a gray spoon. There we go. See it? 
wherever the light hits, you're going to get the purple. So it completely changes the look of it. Um, let me pause the camera here and let's uh, brush this on a piece and see how it brushes. All right, guys, don't forget, you got to shake it up quite well. Use one of my uh, tins here, my paint tins. All right, let's go. I'm going to use a cheap brush that I got, the whole bag of these things. Now, this is a dark blue piece. Now, see, it's rough. It's rough from the factory. This is how it looks on the Gundam. So just so you guys know if, if it dries rough, you know. I imagine most of these will be used for, uh, it goes on pretty cool. It will be used uh, for miniatures, you know, much smaller brush. I try to do this because I'm trying to, you know, show for the camera, as we say. So I don't have the greatest camera work here, so I got to go, got to go big. Now I would, uh, I would go multi-layers with this. Not too bad. All right, let's try this. I would definitely go with, uh, let's try a smaller brush. Hold on guys, I'm gonna reach over here for a smaller brush. There we go. And maybe you gotta thin this stuff too, I don't know. It didn't say. Yeah, it seems like uh, you, it's like airbrushing. Got to go in for a second coat, smooth it out, and uh, I think it, it'll dry probably without all the brush strokes. I imagine. Let's uh, just try it on a little piece here, just so you guys can see. Now it instantly turns its color. That's for sure. See, it turns its purple. But in a real-time experiment, let's go ahead and thin it. Not a ton. I want to thin it a lot. All right. Let's see. Yeah, I'm getting the same. Can you see it? Matter of fact, the little brush is no better than the bigger brush. Um, I think you're definitely going to get the results you want airbrushing it, for sure. You're not going to get that. Because it's a thick paint to start with, I'm getting, I'm getting that final thick brush stroke through it. So, me personally, I would definitely airbrush this. See if I can get these strokes out. Not bad, not bad. It's got a ways to dry. I mean, that's the original color. So, definitely a much better airbrush paint. And I guess if you're going to paint something tiny, like see this little end here, like that, you can do it with, for sure, little parts. But as far as, uh, I mean, you're getting the actual color shift, but you really got to uh, work at it to get rid of the brush strokes, you know. And uh, this this is an expensive brush. This is a ten fifteen dollar brush. So I mean, you still you know you're still going to get that look, you know. But that's why I tried it. It's an experiment. So let's move on with the rest of the results, airbrushed wise. All right. Next up is Crystal Cavern. All right. This is. I want to show you, I didn't put this over white, it showed up, didn't show up well at all. So this is over the black spoon, and this is over the gloss black all clad base. And uh, in person there's no real difference, a little shinier on the gloss base. Actually changes the tone of it a little bit, and here it is over the Gundam piece. Came out really nice on that. 
Yeah, you, you buy, I would definitely, I personally would only airbrush these. That's for sure. Uh, okay, next up. Uh, lunar Eclipse. This I just did over the two. The Black Spoon. Very nice. A real deep, nice purple. I like this. Deep purple. The Band. All right. And here it is over the Gumpla piece. Look at how nice it dried. But because it's so dark, you're not getting a lot of color shifting, whereas some of these brighter colors, you get the shift right away. But still, this is a nice subtle dark purple for uh, for a kit if you're looking for a unique look that's uh, not dark black or blue but I'm not getting a great color shift with it. Oh it is pretty subtle anyway it's this purple to this orange and uh, you sort of get it here but it's a pretty subtle color shift okay next up is 4D glasses oops Right, so the standard look here is over the black spoon. Over my little stone piece. Looks great there, huh? I'm not getting color shift though on any of the stones. I noticed for some reason. It needs a flat surface, a beveled surface to get the color shift. So it looks like that's what these are gonna probably end up looking like, the metallics. All right, this is over the Gundam piece. Looks like one of the skirts. Now this really shifts. Now this is really deep, dark purple on the top. The green's here on the side. Once the light hits it direct, it is green. So it looks like this is what this uh, emerald forest, what is this emerald nightmare is going to end up uh, looking like, I hope. It's a color I've been looking for, a dark green like that. This is it over gray. Pretty subtle, but you're getting that green reflection. You know, it's a nice color. This is uh, if you paint this just over the Gundam, you put primer than this, you're gonna get a nice look because a lot of the kits, you know, are white. Hold on, let me grab my Gundam up here. Sorry, guys. See now, if I sprayed him with this, see the, see the the look I would get instead of the regular uh, flat white that I did this with. Or, hold on guys, sorry, we're doing all this in real time guys. Here is my Braun F1 Racing custom build. Now this I did a pearl silver, but look, this would look good on this. And it would have had a reflective color. Whereas this is, it's just, there is no you know color changing at all. See it? So here's where a thing like this would come in handy. Put your primer down, and then put this over it. You're going to get a nice unique look in the look particularly with all the lines on this uh gumpla you know what i mean you're going to get the knees bent and you're going to get different a different look in the light it would have been really good for this that would have been great for that hold on guys i'm going to put him back one second thanks guys for the patience so that's what that is over gray and finally i put it over that red you saw on camera not much it just gave it a shimmer um, I wish you could see it in person. You, you can see more of the gray of it. It looks more like this in person overall. But, uh, again, that's another unique look. I mean, you're looking for something different. These are your choices right here, putting it over different colors and uh, bases. Now, um, on to the ones I did not like. I did not like the ones that were specifically made to go over white. And I'm going to show you why in a second. All right. This is it over the white spoon. I hit it when I put it, when I picked it up. That's that little mark there. It's not bad, but it doesn't have a nice, it just doesn't have a nice look to it, a nice shift. It shows it uh, prism power. It shows the purple uh, to this pinkish color. And I only get the purple here, and it's not even that deep. I was hoping for a deeper color. But again, not bad, but I just don't, I don't like uh, the performance of it at all. It has a nice shimmer over the rock, but none of them are giving me a color shift rock look at all. Look at them, they're just whatever the color is, it is. Whereas on here you're getting the purple reflection. Here it is on the Gumpla head. Try and get the light on this for you guys. Hold on, let me try and bring my light way over here. Yeah, it's not doing much. 
Not much. It didn't look great on this. It looks a little better in person. I'm trying to show you guys. And this is it over black. I mean, <laughs> it's the same paint. You're getting just the darker blue purple color there, I guess. Yeah. Real pretty over black. Look at it. I paint a car that color. One of my uh, GTR kits. Look at that. But again, I didn't like the performance of these at all. Um, you can't thin them as much because they're going over white. I found they had to lay back a few drops on the uh, on the thinner. Um, now this color I didn't like at all. This performance on this one was awful for me. Twin Suns. I tried everything. Everything. I'll show you how I ended up with. Here's the... The overall look. I mean, it looks good to you guys on camera. In person, it's kind of splotchy. But I'm getting no... I'm not getting that green in it at all. It's even showing the green, green as a dominant color. I'm, I, I'm not getting it at all. A little bit in the the bloom of the reflection. And this was it over uh, gray or white. I had trouble with it at first. Then I thickened it up a little bit and got this. So you definitely got to go uh, not as... Th not as uh, thin. You got to go a little less on the thinning on these ones over white. This is it over the stone. Again, this isn't bad. Same results on all the stones. You're not going to get the color shifting at all. Um, this is it over black. Again, I got a splotchiness. Maybe I got a bad bottle or I didn't shake it enough. I thought I shook it quite a bit. But this is it. Definitely you're getting the, the lower color now. See it? That's over black. And this is. I went back in and poured it in straight out of the bottle and I had a lot of trouble getting it out it spit I had to turn up the air pressure but this one came out closest to the best I could get it so I'm guessing two or three drops max to thin this stuff but again I'm not getting the color shift that I want it's just metallic blue it just looks like the blue in the bottle not bad these performed way better you know and uh, that's that that is the test. They have a ton of colors to choose from. So if you want to go to their website, uh, Turbo Dork, um, I got these from them directly. I was hoping for an affiliate link for you guys, but uh, they never got back to me. Um, here's the paint drying a little bit. See it on the spoon? Not bad. I'm still getting brush strokes, which is too bad. But um, here's the conclusion. The Vallejo shifters, I think, are better. These are the ones I tested about a week ago. These are all out of this box. I'm just grabbing them so you guys can see them. I thought the performance was a little better on these. But the color shift isn't as dramatic. This is it with a dull coat over it. I put a matte coating over it. See it? Completely changed it. But a cool look though, huh? And this is it over some gumpla pieces that I did in the video. So I personally do like these. But when compared to these, it's a much better color shift and a more uh, more showy. You know, I can see from here the purple in this on the end. And uh, hold on, this is a really dramatic piece here. Let's see now, this is mostly purple out of here. Don't know which one it is. It's three. It's this one, green, blue, violet. So I mean. You can see the, this is gold here. You can see the shifting. There's not as much on this. So it's, it's two kind of paints. It's very subtle here, but it goes on. It performs really well. Whereas these, you're going to get a more dramatic color shifting, period. I, you just, it's just how it's going to be. But anyway, let's get these off. There we go. Out of the way. All right, guys, that's the test. Anyway, Turbo Dark, pretty good. I do like them. I'm hoping I'm going to uh, get the results like these stones are giving me with these uh, metallics. Cause I do like a, a good metallic. Um, I will be testing these soon, these co these cheap color shifts uh, from Walmart. And then I got a color shift spray paint from Testers. We'll be trying those out at some point. 
and I think my next test is going to be these wicked colors this is uh, Quicksilver and this is gold chrome and I've heard good things about both and um, I think this will be my next test early in the week so uh, stick around for that and uh, thanks for sticking around for as long as this video was guys and uh, please uh, like the video it helps a lot and please subscribe if you haven't already because uh, I don't want you to miss any other tests coming up and I have a plenty of them coming up I'll put a link in the description below including this golden uh, airbrush medium which is really good this is really good and um, I'm going to be testing that with mixing some of these uh, metallic powders you see these these pigments so I'm hoping to get a set of these metal pigments and mix it up with some of these mediums and see if we get kind of results like this anyway guys thanks guys have a great Labor Day weekend and we'll see you in the next video